hell with that one. Now, this, you see, 68,833,476 is a figure of the total number of registered voters we have in the country at the moment. But then, those who have been able to collect their permanent voter cards and are ready for the elections, 56,350,776 of them say, we are good to go. And then you have an outstanding figure. And this is as of the 17th of March this year. And that figure, 12,482,700. All waiting to be part of that 56 million figure who will eventually can beat their chest and say, yes, we might as well just go ahead for the elections. Well, moving on from the distribution of the PVCs, okay, well, uh, this now happens to be the representation of those who have not collected their PVC as well as those who have collected their PVCs in percentages now. So we've got 81.87% of uh, registered voters, total number of registered voters, have been able to pick up their PVCs while 18.13% are waiting to become part of that. 81% who have collected their PVCs to go on. And don't forget, as at March 17th. And then on, uh, after that, uh, remember, the PVC also works with the card readers. Well, the, the commission uh, makes us understand that we have a total of 182,000 of these uh, card readers, but 400 of them had factory faults. They weren't working, but the chairman says, yes, they're making attempts to see how they can replace all of those and ensure that everyone works on that day. He also did say, by the way, that yes, we have uh, an extra card reader for each polling unit. That's the good part of it. So if one doesn't work, he expects the other to function. So the uh, deadline day for the collection of the PVC, everyone is watching to see what will happen at the end of the day. Well, let's take you through uh, uh, some activity that also went on within this five-week now uh, window of that six-week extension, and this has to do with security. Take a look. So, so good luck, everybody. Jonathan! The combat-ready president and commander-in-chief may have had three things in mind while visiting the war front in Mubi Adabawa State and Baga in Borono State. <laughs> Firstly, to commend the gallant soldiers for the able way they recaptured territories formerly in the hands of the insurgents, a proof that they can protect the territorial integrity of Nigeria and shame those who had concluded that it was impossible. Before this time, we didn't have enough material to confront the terrorists. But now, at least, we received a significant number of uh, weapons that has been uh, improving the, the, the operations. We are pleased with you, what you are doing. We we'll continue to encourage you. The whole world appreciates the strength of the Nigerian army because of your peacekeeping operations. Because of the Nigerian army, we're able to stabilize a number of West African and indeed African countries. Because the world was wondering what was happening to Nigeria. These the Nigerian soldiers we know that Boko Haram held them to ransom for a very long time. But things have changed now. We are very happy with what we are doing. How to continue to reinforce them with necessary equipment and logistics to complete the mission, as well as their welfare, including rewards for the soldiers when it is all said and done, especially with families of soldiers who lost their lives in this battle, is next on his mind. But be rest assured that anything that is due you, you will surely get it. And all of you who have shown gallantry will be rewarded according to the traditions of the armed forces and according to the rules and regulations governing the operations and, of course, the goodwill of Nigerians and their country. The soldiers' response was reassuring as they chant gallantly. Lastly, the president is glad with the return of the Emir of Mobi. 
He promised him and other displaced persons who are returning a speedy resettlement. We are here for a tour also to look at the level of devastation and to what extent the federal government would assist to cushion the effects, especially as to rehabilitate our people and to come back. But the main thing, the key thing, is to make sure that we flush the Boko Haram out of Nigeria and will not allow them to go into any other country. Collectively, Nigeria, Chad, Niger, Cameroon, and then we'll make sure that the story of Boko Haram will come to an end and very soon. The president was accompanied on the inspection by service chiefs, spent several hours taking area view of the towns recently recaptured just to reassure himself that of a fact the Nigerian soldiers are equal to the task they have undertaken to safeguard lives and property in Nigeria. Chukuma on Repusi, Channel's Television News. So there you go, one of the reports in our archive about security as it has to do with this forthcoming elections. Of course, as always, let me move over and join our guests who are here today. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on this evening. My pleasure. Well, speaking about uh, our preparations for elections, uh, having gone through some of the activity as they are playing out, uh, still are, because the big day will be next weekend. Let me start with Mr. Farr. Yes. What's your assessment of how prepared or otherwise we are for these elections? Well, the, the activities have been um, remarkably uh, deep, you know, uh, in, in particular from the uh, umpire's angle. Um, we have heard so much of PVCs, we have heard so much about card readers and all of that. And I think that um, uh, the chairman of INEC has tried to demonstrate to Nigeria that he, he, he seeks to give us a free and fair and credible election. But, uh, you know, there is still this um, great doubt that he can, he can achieve that. Um, if you allow me a little moment, I could take us down historical length. Since 1960, Nigeria has not uh, exactly been given a structure that can deliver a free and fair election. Uh, which we, we should not be deceived we, with even the technology that we have brought in here now, the card reader and um, you know the PVC. They they don't stand much chance. If oh, uh, uh, that that's what I'm I'm coming to now. Now, if you look at the Constitution of Nigeria. It, it, it keeps giving a participant in the election pass to appoint the referee for that election. You know, uh, uh, these days Nigeria can identify easily with the English Premiership. You, you do have, uh, you hear Man you you hear Arsenal and all of that. Just for a moment, imagine that one of those teams appointed the referee for such games. How much of a free and fair election could you get? That's exactly what, what we are facing now. In spite of all that we've done, it appears to me that we are still very far away from having a free and fair election. And then the free and fair election is very, very important for a country that wants to grow. Okay. Let, let me bring you Malachi in this one. Do you share the same view? Well, I think the starting point is to take uh, this advantage to congratulate channels for this special program because in several respects it has uh, uh, helped to deepen the understanding of the people and to follow the events leading up to this uh, election. Thank okay. you. Um, largely speaking, I would say that um, we have seen a remarkable improvement in the level of preparation both from the uh, organization or the institution statutorily saddled with the conduct of election as well as the security agencies. Um, that is a good news um, and I think that given the records you reeled it out in your intro, the percentage is already recorded in terms of collection of PVCs which is at the heart of this exercise is also encouraged. Now, the other flip side is the question of the security situation. I mean, if an election as important as this was uh, postponed on, the, on account of 
the level of insecurity in the Northeast, uh, we would choose to remain circumspect.